and welcome back today we are flying out the yak tree vk 107 and i think i promised i was gonna make a video on this at least two years ago probably three and a half to four years ago but here we are we finally managed to get some footage together i made a video a while ago and all the footage was kind of outdated at that point new sound engine new graphic engine and i just never really got around using it so i decided to fly it out again and show you what it's all about this thing is pretty damn good i will make another video on the yak 3u in about a week or two and the video is already basically done so you don't have to wait two years but if i manage to turn into a meat crayon because i fly off the road with 200 kilometers an hour then well i still have an older video on the yak 3u that is still 100 applicable in everything that i say the real differences between the yak 3u and the vk107 is that the vk107 is better between three and a half till about six kilometers anything outside of that the yak tree u just becomes better it's faster it climbs better at low altitude it is just an absolute unit of a plane this thing is a little bit more well-rounded and you can basically fly it everywhere and do somewhat okay where the yak tree u more it's more of a specialist plane but it's extremely good at that one niche that it has if you try to fight anything at low altitude you are going to absolutely rocket shit unless you run into a bi but luckily that thing will be on your team unless you piss it off and it's trying to team kill you you should be completely fine with that so it turns well it climbs well it's pretty fast not as fast as the rack yak tree you on the deck it's about 25 to 30 kilometers slower on, the, on sea level so it does basically everything well shavax has been buffed they're absolutely amazing now so what is the downside of this plane the two things will be the compression so the stiffening of the control surfaces as well as the rip speed your rip speed is extremely low it's the same as the one at 4.0 but this time you're facing sometimes jets and f2g's and stuff the f2g is almost as fast in a straight line as when you rip just let that sink in but in general you are basically above everyone at the start of the match and you can dogfight virtually everything i'm not scared of p51 h's i'm not really scared of griffin spitfires you do want to be somewhat careful with them because they can stall very late and they can just pitch it up into you but you just have so much more retention that you will most of the time just end up stalling them out as long as it's not a mark 24 that thing is a little bit of a ufo when it comes to props however it still doesn't really eat any jets for breakfast like the f7f does so why it's 7.0 i have no clue it's definitely one of those props that's super super good versus other props but against other jets it's just not it it's not very strong but luckily you don't have to deal with those your main contemporaries will be 109k force f2g's fu4b's p51h's sometimes griffin spitfires but most of the time it's the 5.7 variant not the mark 22 so it's really not that much of an issue but in general you you have options versus everyone you outrun most of the guys that you can't turn with and you outturn most of the guys that you can't outrun so as long as you can bait people into dogfights and if you can bait people slow you're very likely to win and just like the yak tree the regular one at 4.3 it is extremely strong when you just hold your pitch key don't use your flaps and just kind of let the fight settle it's kind of disgusting and something like a p51h something that's as strong as the p51h kind of just gets gets crushed it's kind of funny the 51h can of course just climb away boom and zoom you forever it's very annoying to fight but if they stick the dog fight and you get some positioning at the start and you don't move it like 600 kilometers an hour because then the p51h will be able to pull in once but that doesn't happen here we are going relatively slow and look at this i'm not trying to go vertical i'm not trying to use my engine power i'm just looping flat turns and i'm very slowly pitching up into him to deny him the angle to deny him the ability to cut me off but I'm trying to stay around at 300 mark to 90 mark and just use the fact that my prop will produce the most amount of power there. Not literally, but I feel like that's about the sweet spot to be in. So I'm just on the 6. I'm already on the 6. He's slightly above us. So I'm not really aggressively trying to climb up after him. Right now I'm trying to get a little bit of positioning first by just going straight, just flat turning. And occasionally I will drop my nose a little bit below the horizon to pick up some speed. And then this guy tries to break off and fly away. Unfortunately for him, this game, my aim was pretty solid. And he's going to feel that. And then he gets a little bit uh, upset in the chat. But because it's a P51H and he's obviously not going to be burning up. I'm trying to chase him down for a little bit here. 
And I'm trying to tap him once more. He gets super mad in the chat. And he's going to dive out. I'm not going to focus him down right now. He's pretty badly damaged. And if he thinks about recommitting to me, he's not going to have a good time. So for now, I'm going to break off and see if I can do something about the TAR-152. And it's a TAR-152H. But he's already smoking, so I'm not too worried about him. And then I see the F2G turning. But I think to myself, I'll try to slam this 152H real quick before I start dogfighting the F2G. Unfortunately, he starts diving below us. He actually notices us. And because of that, I'm going to be blasting my wings off the airframe if I follow that. So I won't. I then go for the F2G. I pull up over his nose. He sprays at us. He hits like 150 cal and hits our tail. No big deal. Because right now, he's already lost. He might have more energy. But we turn so much better that I can just stay inside of his turning circle. And there's really nothing this guy can do other than run away. And he does exactly that. He's going to be turning away. He's going to be diving away even. And he has so much more speed than us. But I hope you did see just how vast the turning difference was right there. So I'm going to try to cut him off. I'm trying to stay right on top of him. So he has to choose the side to go to. And then I can start putting my nose in front of his nose. And I'll start gaining a little bit despite being slower. Because I'm cutting off his fly pad. And luckily... Again, I loaded the aimbolt this game. So that's going to be shot number one. That's a crit. And he's not really going to be outrunning us anymore. It might take a while for me to get to him. And I don't want him to get near smooth operator there. So we shoot him again. And we hit him again. But the F2G damage model is about as busted as the P51H is. That is now limping back to the base. But he will be back for round two in due time. So we shoot him a third time. And he finally goes down. We then fly to the middle of the map. And there is the P51H, except this time the P51H is in the disadvantage instead of the advantageous position. So I'm flying away a little bit here to get some separation between me, him and the airfield. In the hope that he also stays on my 6, because he has his my 6, he has been molding in the chat. So I can almost bet my ass on it that he is going to try to kill me right here. So what do we do? We turn up into him. I want to try to go not too far above 550, so I actually have a lot of maneuverability to get out of his guns. And he has to pitch up for us. So all I have to do now is stay out of his guns. And even though he is on my 6. I have him by the balls here. Which is pretty funny. If he tries to dive out now I'll catch him. If he tries to stick this fight he'll stall out below me. So he's doing exactly that. He's sticking. I can then pull down into him. Pick up a little bit of speed. Make this turn a lot quicker. I turn in. I get a crit. And then I notice he instantly turns to the airfield. But luckily it's someone that's actually respectable. And he actually fights normally. So he's going to fly in front of us. And at this point he can't really do anything. He is crit. He will outrun us in the long run. But he needs to burn through all my ammo to actually get away from me. And you can tell he's not exactly going that fast. I probably damaged more than I thought I did. He's not going to be outrunning us. I just have to clean him up. Down he goes. And of course I have to hit him in the chat. Because well he did at the start as well. There we go. That's going to be game number one. And here we are with an FU-4B with a pretty vast altitude advantage. Now if this guy plays it right, there is very little I can do about him. He is faster than us, he is a lot better at high speed and those guns absolutely shred us. And because of this, this is the start of the match, I'm going to be a little bit more risky. And I'm trying to get this guy on my 6 to just get him out of here. So right now I'm trying to get him as fast on us as possible. I'm trying to make him compress as much as possible. And I noticed he goes straight up. Now this is an angle that I feel confident that I can kill him in. I'm going to be out climbing him. I'm going to be out stalling him. And I should have ample time to just click him out of the air. So we shoot a little bit. We get a hit. We shoot again. He dodges a little bit. We shoot again. We shoot again. And we shoot again. And we hit him four times in total. He is still not dead. This time I actually managed to record however... That I managed to reverse him. I got a little bit lucky there that he didn't hit us. But at the same time he kind of should have died from that. So it would have been a little bit bullshit if he then just comes down and one shots us. Luckily he didn't do that. And because he had a little bit of an altitude advantage. He can now dive out. And he will actually be faster than us. But he won't be able to outrun us forever. And because this is like a 6v6 game I believe. It wasn't very big. And I wanted this guy out of the match as quickly as I could. Because I just noticed the way he is playing. I'm going to have a real issue with this guy at the end of the match. And I know with the Yak3 VK107. I am not too fast about going to lower altitudes. And dealing with people down there. 
So I'm gonna just chase this guy to the deck and I don't recommend you to do this to everyone. I see this very very often where people see one guy and they'll just absolutely send it for him. And then they end up chasing him so hard that they don't look around and they just end up getting killed by someone else. The reason I'm doing it here is because I noticed this guy is going to be annoying. I noticed that this, the match is pretty small. Look at that, almost everyone is already dead, that's the reason. So I need to kill this guy because he's going to be one of the fighters late game that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to chase him right now, I'm just staying near my rip speed. And I can stay at 700 for a pretty long time, or like 690 IAS. And I'm going kind of diagonal. So I'm going faster than his rip speed, or straight line speed. He is already damaged. Plus I am cutting him off. So eventually I'm just gonna reel him in. And there's really nothing he can do about it. So I'm very slowly but surely reeling him in. I don't need to dive any steeper. Because I will eventually reach him. And once I do, he dies. Even if I wasn't damaged, he is gonna have a very big problem in this scenario. Because he's alone. There's no one to help him out. And then he notices that he's about to die. So I'm just going to cut my throttle. And I'm going to very easily just stay on a 6. And we hit him again. All I have to do now is make sure that we don't fly through his guns. And the reason I dropped my throttle that much. Was to just stay inside of his turning circle. I know that he can get away from us. I know that we are alone here. And I don't want to go too high again. And run another energy trap. Because if I do that I'm going to have a very big chance. That this guy starts diving away again. Starts outrunning us. And by the time I finally get near him, this F2G comes in. The F2G that I'm addressing right here. The F2G is luckily also alone. So for now, I'm going to fly away from him. That's not because I'm trying to outrun him or trying to outclimb him. Because neither of those things is going to happen. I'm trying to create a little bit of a space cushion between him and the other F2G. Because the other F2G looked to be kind of occupied with a bomber. So I want to get a little bit of a space cushion here. So I have slightly more time to deal with this F2G because this might take a while. If the F2G plays it right, I'm going to have a problem because he's probably going to stay alive until the second one comes in. I really can't touch an F2G if he plays it right, not at this altitude at least. So I created a little bit of a space cushion. I start diving. I'm trying to make him pick up as much speed as possible. And then I'm going to turn that against him by instantly turning around and being on the 6 in a singular turn. Look at that. I almost gun him down right there. But since he keeps sticking this fight. I'm going to be completely fine. Because he just doesn't turn well enough. So he gets in front of us. We crit him with the second burst. And now all I have to do is again clean it up. And that's mostly what it is with this plane. All you have to do is dodge their guns. And once you dodge their guns enough. It's just a matter of praying that they actually stick the fight. Because if they do. They are very likely just going to die. And a little bit later. On this same map. There is going to be an AM1 above us. And I'm right now I'm just pretending that I don't see him. Because he has been circling behind us for about 2 or 3 minutes. I already had to land. I took back off. We have an, a very vast ticket disadvantage. So I'm just trying to get these tickets as low as humanly possible. But I also want this AM1 to actually dive on us. So how do I do that? By making him think I don't see him. Or at least give him the opportunity to dive on us. Because we are ground pound and we are probably low on energy. And not going that fast. So even though when I'm flying at him. I'm still not pitching into him. I'm just giving him the illusion that I completely don't see him. Because if I do that he might actually start engaging us. All I have to do is make him commit once. And then he dies. So we click on the AA. We click on it again. Down it goes. And now we give the 6 of the AM to the AM1. And we completely outperform this guy. And if he's going faster than us. It's actually going to be pretty easy to just reverse him. Because he's going to overshoot. He doesn't roll very well. He doesn't maintain his energy very well. So all I have to do is just stay out of his guns for a little bit. As we have been doing for the rest of this video. And then we just stall his ass out. So we turn back into him. I want him to dive on us right here. He does wait a little bit. But I notice that. So I pitch into him. And then I roll out last second. And look at that. Just like that. He is basically reversed. And because he's going so much faster. He just turns in front of us. He also messes up by flying straight for a little bit. But at this point it's just a matter of cleaning up. A matter of cleaning up. <clears throat> a matter of cleaning up. Kind of. He, he dies finally. But then we lose on tickets because, well, we can't find the last two guys. 
the last three guys, I don't know. But they're all hiding somewhere on the map, and we have no idea where they are, so we lose on tickets. A little bit unfortunate, but you know, what can you do about it? And here for the last game, we are gonna do a little bit of shit talking, because for some reason this always happens when I fly Russian planes. It's the same with the yak 3 u video that I linked at the start. I don't know what it is, but when I fly these planes, I just start ending up talking so much trash. It's also probably because I'm getting a little bit impatient when I fly these planes. Because a lot of people just don't engage you and it's very annoying even when they have the advantage. Even when they can do whatever they want. Just like this Ki-83 right now above us. He is above us. He's not among us just yet. He's quite far away. And he's just climbing. He's two kilometers above us. And there is another teammate nearby so I'm going to give him some slack right now. But he doesn't even try to engage. He's simply just... Just keeping his elder flying away from us. So I start talking in chat. And the reason I, I do this mainly is to just trigger people, make them commit to fights. And very often it works. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. At the end of the day, I really don't care. I just take a very quick glance at what kind of player it is. I have a little bit of an idea right now. And I'm just going to see if I can let this guy kill the Spitfire so I can actually 1v1 him. But first, I'm going to see if I can catch him off guard. See if I can kind of third party him. And if I can do that, I'm just going to turn this into 1v1. And this seems very... I'm not, not sure what word to use. It's But it's a little bit of a dick move. And it is. The thing is, very often when you have a random teammate, whenever you try to set something up, they keep ruining it because you can't really communicate. So, in the end, I kind of want to fight with this Ki-83 for content's sake. And I just want this guy to actually engage someone. Because right now he's, he just keeps climbing. He's not trying to engage anyone. He's not trying to do anything. And I know that it's 2v1. I've been in these scenarios very often. And you've seen it plenty of times on my videos. Just running and just climbing when you have nothing to worry about is not going to get you anywhere. And I'm going to go back to this. You have to take some risk when you're not in a completely advantageous position. If it's 2v1... You need to kill one of us and otherwise you are going to have a problem. It's super annoying. So I leave him alone. The Spitfire just kind of kills himself and then he finally comes in. And he kills him. Right now we are kind of co out but he's going much much quicker than us. So I wonder if he now actually starts engaging us. He probably won't. But I can dream. So I'm trying to keep my altitude a little bit here. I'm just trying to see if he actually wants to do anything. So I'm going to stay relatively quick and in front of him. I'm not trying to force head-ons. I'm not trying to give him any reason to break off. I'm just trying to lull him into this false sense of security. And he breaks off at 1.9 kilometers. Now if that's not some passive shit, I don't know what is. He can at least try to get within gun range, get a few pop shots off and then break off. What are you accomplishing by diving on me when I'm the highest person on the map? And I'm breaking off at like 1.9. This is not going to get you anywhere. You're not gaining any position. Because the lower we go the bigger my advantage becomes again. So I turn in. I set up for a reversal. And this time he actually sticks for some reason. So I go up and over. And he dives a little bit longer. And what does he do? He goes straight for a little bit. He's wasting all his top speed. And then he goes into a climb. Now props for him for not going straight up. He's playing it somewhat correctly. He just... If you are watching this, I'm, I don't mean it in a shit-talking manner. That's the way I was acting in the game is mostly just to provoke you. You played it alright for the most part, but you're doing it a little bit too aggressively. You are either being way too aggressive, like this. You're trying to stall me out by flying straight up. But stalling yourself out, even though when you have a kilometer of altitude on someone, makes you an extremely easy shot. And he says that I keep running. He's probably trying to do the same thing as I am, so I can't really fault him for that. But when you have the advantage in speed, altitude, and all the calories in the world, if you don't want me to run, I will not be able to, because I can't actually get away from you. I crit him. He turns around. He runs away from me. I'm just trying to get him on my six. But you know... Doesn't matter, he's probably doing the same thing as I do, so again, I can't really fault him. I crit him, so I go for the J6K right now, I want to kill him right now, because the Ki-83 is not around, he's not around to support his teammate, which means that I can 1v1 this guy, 
with a calorie advantage that rivals the breakfast of your model today. So all I have to do now is again, you've heard this phrase before today, stay outside of his guns and he will just die. There is very little that J6K can do in this scenario, but he also goes head on with an F2G, which really seals the deal because now I can just kind of rule him in, or lure him in, lull him in, reel him in, that's the word. I got a crit. And then all I have to do is sit on his 6. And he went straight for a little bit. So I'm going to take that opportunity instantly to drop total. And just stay on this guy's 6. That's a second hit. And now all I have to do is again clean it up. Also a phrase you've heard a few times already. And that's hit number 3. And he's going to hit a 3. And if you noticed, I pronounced both those things exactly the same way. So here is an 84. And the 84 has been diving from orbit on this P-51. The P-51... Shuri made a little bit of a mistake in dying to that guy. The 84 also has an energy advantage. Not quite to rival your model's breakfast, but quite a lot of calories nonetheless. So what do I do? I wait a little bit. I turn in behind him. And at this point, the 84 is essentially dead. All I have to do now is, you guessed it, clean it up. So I'm going to stay on this guy's 6. And all I have to do now is pull in right there and kill him. And what does the F2G do? He kills himself by going full commit head on. I already have the guy dead to right. And what do you do? You basically throw the match to get one more kill. If you had let me kill that guy, you probably would have been able to kill the Junker 288. And then we would have very easily won the match. Now sure, I ended up clutching it in the end anyway. But this key 83 could have very easily killed me if he played it completely right. Luckily he didn't. Luckily he made another big mistake. But that F2G essentially threw the match for an easy kill. An easy kill he could have easily at least tried to dodge. Like if he had just dodged the head on and then pulled back in. He probably still would have killed him. And he wouldn't have died. But instead he goes head on with a guy that's completely stalled out. A guy that's completely helpless. And a guy that was about 5 seconds away from being dead regardless. But of course 20 extra resource points. Is better than getting a multiplier that makes you like get double. So key the tree comes in. We set the Junker on fire. So I'm not too fussed about him. All I have to do now is make his key the tree compress. And I know that this guy wants to kill us really badly. Why is that? Because I've been talking shit the entire match. And he does the exact same thing. As the way that I killed him before. So I'm going to shoot at him. And right now he's going straight for an awfully long time. And when you do that. You are wasting a lot of energy. You are not flying a jet. You are flying a prop. And because of that. If you go straight above your top speed. You're going to lose a lot of energy. And if you then try to just pitch straight up. What I'm going to do is. I fly straight for a little bit. I go into a shallow climb. To just close the gap a little bit. And then once I'm directly below you. And you are going basically straight up. Stalling out. All I have to do is just pitch in. And you don't have the turn rate to actually get a shot on me. So he misjudges a little bit. If he had judged that a little bit better and he had gone up a little bit sooner, he would have probably been able to kill me right there because I took his bait. The thing is, he set up the bait improperly, so I'm able to just instantly punish him for it. He then gets an oil leak, and when you get an oil leak in the Ki-83, it's basically over. Because those engines start overheating extremely quickly. He knows this, so he instantly full sends the fight. And that's the best thing he could have done at this point. At the end of the day, he flies through my guns and he dies. But... I'm sincerely sorry for cyberbullying you, sorry for the shit talk. Thank you for the nice fight, GG. And I will see you all in the next one.